in what was called the Parliament of the World's Religions. It's held in uh, 19, I believe it was 1986, 87 era. Somebody sent me from Chicago uh, Tribune uh, Magazine. I'm sorry, it was not 1986, 1987. That was the New Age Harmonic Convergence. This was held in uh, 1993. It was the 100th anniversary of the uh, first Parliament of the World's Religions held in 1893. Uh, there's so many of these New Age and uh, <laughs> world religious conclaves are getting together, you get a little confused sometimes. Here in this ministry, we keep track of all of them. From the Chicago Tribune magazine, this is an insert in the Chicago Tribune newspaper. It says, show of faith, from Anglicans to the fire-eating Zoroastrians, the world's religions come to Chicago. You've got to see some of the pictures inside. I don't have time for them. But there's the great golden Buddha on display there at the Parma of the world's religions. Cardinal Bernadine was there. The Pope sent a message of hope and faith to the people to be read there. And, of course, Chuck Colson was there receiving his award for progress in religion. Here from my own Flashpoint newsletter, it's now called Power of Prophecy. In April of 93, I gave absolute evidence that the Pope has also approved voodoo and other false religions. In fact, I show here that the Pope went to Africa to... Uh, Cotonou, Benin, the country of Benin. I want to read to you what the Pope said. On the second day of his 10th African pilgrimage, the Pope had a meeting with the priest of the Vadun. The priest of the Vadun. These are voodoo worshipers. They believe in snake gods and goddesses and other fetishes, and they use them in their rituals. The Pope told the voodooists that just as they draw on their ancestors for their faith, so do Christians revere their ancestors in the faith. Now, when the Pope was through, one of the voodoo priests had this to say, and I want to quote him, quote, I have never seen God, but today when I have seen the Pope, I recognize that I have seen the good God. He says the Pope is God. That's from a voodoo leader. And by the way, <laughs> As I go on to state here, that the Pope agreed that the Badoon voodoo religion has nothing to do with the devil uh, or with Satan. Of course, the Pope is wrong in that. Now, let's look at what the Pope has been doing in terms of the Muslims and the Christians and the Jews and affirming and endorsing these other religions and saying that even though it's true outside of the Catholic Church, there is no salvation. According to the Pope and his new catechism, everyone today is a Catholic. That's right. Everyone on earth, every human being, whether they know it or not, has Jesus inside and is a Catholic. Did you know that you're a Catholic? I never knew until I read the new catechism of the Catholic Church. One of the groups that the Pope has uh, really sought to recruit and to bring into his world religious system are the Muslims. Here's Christian newspaper. Uh, the Christian News of January 1999, in which the Pope says that Muslims and Christians worship the same God. Well, do they? <laughs> well, the old Catholic catechism said absolutely not. In fact, according to the older Catholic catechisms, Protestants could not go to heaven, Muslims couldn't, Buddhists, in fact, only Catholics and good Catholics at, at that could go to heaven. But all things have changed. Because according to the new catechism, all men and women living on the face of the planet Earth are saved, whether they know it or not. And all are Catholics, whether they know it or not. And Jesus is work working invisibly behind every religion and in every religious path, bringing men to a more perfect and full understanding of God. Well... Of course, these things are not true. And again, I ask the question, is the Pope Christian? Is he even Catholic? Here's a picture of the Pope meeting with the uh, King of Morocco. We'll have more on that later. And there he was very warmly greeted by tens of thousands of Muslims. Now, when we get into the Christian area, it's very interesting. The Pope has uh, reached out to the Protestants and to the Orthodox. Uh, it's very uh, fascinating uh, to me that according to one 
Eastern Orthodox publication, Orthodox Life, volume number 3, 1995. It says that at Vatican City, Pope John Paul II, head of the Roman Catholic Church, met with Patriarch Bartholomew, symbolic head of all Orthodox Christians. They were on the balcony of the Basilica of St. Peter's to commemorate their ecumenical efforts in view of the coming year 2000. And it says something amazing happened. Something amazing. Just as the patriarch was talking about the power of the devil and how they sought to overcome that, he and the Pope working together, let me just read it to you here. It says, when Bartholomew asked Christians to pray and fast to oppose the power of the devil and to drive out the demons, all the faithful were startled by a lightning bolt which struck the basilica, followed by a violent summer storm. The Pope and the head of the Orthodox Church, they're on the balcony. And as he talked about the devil, a bolt of lightning struck. Oh, they say that it startled Pope John Paul II and the Greek Orthodox leader. Was that a message from God that perhaps the Pope is not Catholic and is not even Christian? Or was it a sign of pleasure by the adversary? Quite interesting. Well, here's a news uh, feature. Pope calls for Christian unity. Christian unity. Yes, indeed. And you know, all of the Christians are moving right into that unity with the Pope. They don't even call themselves Protestants anymore. They're ex-Protestants. Here at the World Council of Churches headquarters is the Pope meeting with Joan Campbell. She's a Methodist minister and head of the World Council of Churches, the National Council of Churches, actually. There they are meeting all together. There's Methodists and Lutherans and so on and so on. Here he is meeting again with the uh, Archbishop of Canterbury, the head of the Anglican Church. I have so much to show you. I wish you had time. Here's the Pope. He was invited to a Lutheran church. Μελέτης Μεταξάκης, 31ου βαθμού μασόνος και 33ου βαθμού μασόνος, Χρυσόστομος, Παπαδόπουλος και Επίσκοπος. Οι δύο αυτοί, αυτοί σχίστε και με τα αριθμιστέ του αεροπτολογίου μασόνη, εδίωξαν άπεινος τους ορθοδόξους χριστιανούς, οι οποίοι θα ήθελαν να κρατήσουν την πατρών παράδοση. them today. Why Catholics are our allies. Folks, it goes on and on. Here is a, a picture, for example, of a man some of you know from the Hour of Power uh, television program. There is Robert Schuller, Dr. Robert Schuller. Now Schuller says, and he admits, that before his great crystal cathedral was built in Garden Grove, California, he flew, he flew to the Vatican in Rome and brought the blueprints with him so that the Holy Father of Rome could bless Robert Schiller's blueprints of the Crystal Cathedral. The largest Christian network in the world is Trinity Broadcasting Network. And have I got an interesting picture? You see, the papal authorities helped Paul and Jan Crouch to get on the air with a television station in Rome. And there you see in the inset of their Praise the Lord newspaper, September 1994, there they are, Paul Crouch. This, I think they have over a thousand television stations throughout the world on Trinity Broadcasting. And there, this charismatic, so-called Christian leader, Assembly of God, shaking hands with his friend, the Pope. And here's what he said. Benny Hinn, the great faith healer, so-called, and Paul Crouch on TBN. Here's what Crouch said. I want to quote him. Quote, I have erased the word Protestant from my vocabulary. I do not know that word anymore. Then he and Benny Hinn laughed hard together. They laughed at the collapse and fall of Protestantism. Then there's James Dobson. Yes, is he pro-Catholic? Absolutely. Here's a picture of what they call our new welcome center, Colorado Springs, Colorado. This is James Dobson. Focus on the families. New headquarters. Look at the buildings. Look at the shapes. Pyramid shapes. I've done some research, I found out that much of the money for this incredible new Focus on the Family Complex came from a Catholic foundation, a Catholic foundation for James Dobson. Now, the Pope is almost an evangelist, said Billy Graham, and here you have Billy Graham 
excuse me, for the quality of the pictures. Then below, he's meeting with the Pope and presenting him with a gift. Billy Graham meets regularly with the Pope and has delivered messages from the Pope to the people of North uh, uh, Korea uh, and so forth. Here's an article from Christian News newspaper. It says, Roman Catholics and Baptists may become one denomination. Roman Catholics and Baptists may become one denomination. Uh, it goes on and on. All I've got boxes and boxes of documentation on this, friends. But the chief Protestant, the man who is in the news every day in the United States, the man who goes to church on Sunday with his wife in one hand, his daughter uh, beside them and a Bible in his hand, a man that so many millions love and respect that he could not even be impeached. 